to be able to see some of the, the crispness of the screen and, and you know, to be honest, as much as this is a, an HD camera here in the audience uh, that you see, it doesn't actually do this screen justice and I, and I encourage you to check it out at the booth and, and see that. So you can see here we've got, again, very kind of, you know, easy and, and simple maneuvers, but also very kind of, you know, reactive touch events. You can see very easy to kind of control what's going on. We can actually go in and if we take a look, you know, multi-touch. Uh, as Greg mentioned, you've know, got four finger touch to be able to manipulate the device. So you can actually have you know, full control of what's actually happening here on the screen. So let's leave the photo app in the background. We're going to come back to that in a little minute. Uh, we'll actually go and check out a video on the device here as well. Uh, and, if, and of course, you, you have opportunity to, to check out the sound. I'm not going to pipe the sound just, just to make it easy for me uh, and for you to hear me, but you believe me that this has full sound. So you can see that we have the video playing, again, very crisp, very clean. Uh, and what's really interesting is that, again, you've got full multitasking. So we can see the video actually playing in the background at the same time as the other applications. And in fact, what's interesting is that you can... Now, that was that. That was that. We're not even at the good part yet. So, so you can see here, you can hear, you probably can't hear, but that, the video is actually playing in the background right now. Um, but we're, we're sitting here in the, in the picture of the parrot. And we can actually slide, slide sway from the other applications to move. And so you can see us actually going in and out of these applications, or we can you know, actually see the, the actual applications in the task switcher. Okay, very simple, very easy to use. Let's, look, we'll kill the, kill the video player, we'll actually go into the camera here. And the reason I want to show you the camera is not so much you know, that I'm going to take a picture, but I want to give you an idea of, of what's possible with the camera. So you can see here, obviously, it's black, and that's because the camera's on the back. Um, so now I can take a picture of all of you, of course, but uh, I'll, I'll save yourselves. But what I really wanted to show is also the fact that you can show uh, the front camera. So this is probably a view you don't get at many shows, but hi. <laughs> Nice lights up above. Uh, what you can also do is you can switch back and forth between the camera and the video camera very simply and easily right within the same application. And I can click that button and we can start recording, you know, again, a video of, of this application. So you're very easy to use and what, what's unique is that you'll actually be able to start capturing both the, the front and back camera uh, at the same time within your applications if you wanted to, to you know, capture those video feeds. So one of the other things I wanted to show you was the browser, not because um, I want to show you the functionality of the browser. We're going to have a, a keynote speaker who's going to do a really great job of that. Uh, what I wanted to show you uh, was, was the, the ability to type. So what a lot of people have you know, really wondered is how easy is it to type on this product? And so you see a lot of people with tablets today, so they'll sit here and they'll be like, okay, I'm going to type. I'm going to you know, sit here. And, and you know, again, it types, it types pretty easily, right? But you got a nice multi-touch, I can just hold that down and it goes back. What's really nice about a 7-inch tablet platform is that I can actually sit here uh, with a product like this in both hands and I can actually type uh, with both my thumbs just like you would on a Blackberry and, and, and do it quite fast. Um, so if we actually go and, and switch over and, and have a look at our, at our developer website, um, you can actually see how easy it is for me to actually type and, and do all of that. It's so very simple and easy to do and what you can actually do is you can actually bring up the, the keyboard from the bottom left at any time and then make it disappear if you, if you don't want it to be on the screen. So kind of full control of the states and how it works and you can see that, that the web page loaded without any trouble. So very easy and very simple to use. Um, now this is perhaps the most exciting part for me. So as we've mentioned this is going to support OpenGL 2.0. And what's exciting about OpenGL is, of course, the richness and the graphics and the experience that we've got. And so what the vendor of, uh, of the, the chip manufacturer we're using has actually built out some very simple OpenGL graphics uh, to showcase what's possible on the chipset and the platform. So you can see here a very kind of simple uh, globe of the earth spinning around and then shading because of that. So we go down, we can actually, we'll start up another one. So we'll start up one that uh, showcases flowers. And again, remember that I've got the other one running in the background. Okay, so this one's also building flowers as, as part of what it's doing, and we'll come back to that one in a second. Uh, and then you've got this one called Shader View, which is actually pictures in the background, and then Windows will actually move across those pictures and actually change it. So you can actually see in, in real time uh, that, that shading. Now, here's what's really impressive. You can't find a platform that does that. sophisticated OpenGL graphics at the same time with no degradation in performance. And again, you can move across all of these and you can see them moving you know, seamlessly and simply without any change in the actual applications. And if that isn't enough for you, just for a little bit of fun, 
We're going to give you a taste of some of the types of things you can expect, I think, from a gaming perspective in terms of what's going to be possible on this platform. I had one of the guys on my team actually spend a little bit of time porting over the existing Quake engine, and you can see that running again in parallel at 50, 60 frame, frames per second while the other applications are also still running in the background. So we're not done with the playbook yet, but I am. And one of the things that I wanted to actually give you an opportunity to show you is that as we go through the technical keynotes, I'm going to be coming back in and out to showcase and really establish you know, what we're building and, and what these people who are going to showcase the tools and technologies can help you with and how you can leverage them as experts throughout the rest of the show. And so what I want to do now is I want to showcase the power and flexibility of the Adobe tools and, and the great partnership, as Greg mentioned, that we have with Adobe today to really showcase the power of what we're building with Adobe on our platform and how great it is to be able to build Air applications. And, and there's you know, a really great expert that we have here at Graham named Julian Dolce, who works at our Cutix team. And I'd like to bring him out and he can showcase some of the capabilities of these tools and the platform for you. Julian. <coughs> Thanks everyone, uh, and thanks Mike. I'm, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you guys about uh, the Air SDK and the things that we've been working on and showcase some of the stuff that third-party developers uh, have been working on and using already. So one of the things that you, know, you, you may uh, want to consider when you're, when you're developing for a new platform like the Playbook is you know, to really understand what the UI metaphors are, what the design patterns are, that we've introduced uh, on the device. This will go a long way in making sure that you, know, you provide a really great user experience to, your, uh, to the users of your application, as well it will provide some sort of familiarity the first time a user uh, you know, downloads your application and starts to use it. So I, I want to show you guys a, a, little, uh, a few of the things that you can start to think about when you're designing and, and developing your applications. So you may have seen uh, Mike do you know, some really quick gestures, and uh, once you guys get a chance to have a look and, and play with these, you'll, you'll notice quickly that there aren't a lot of uh, hard or soft buttons on the device. So there's a few at the top, you know, mostly power and volume controls and things like that. But where, you know, other platforms may have a, a home or, or a back button, uh, we have uh, a black bezel all the way around the screen. And this black bezel is all touch sensitive, which allows you to navigate uh, around the device. So let's have a, a quick look at, at what some of this does. So I'm going to launch the music application. And you, know, you can see right away that all of our applications launch up in full screen. So there's no status bar, and, and it kind of hides the rest of the device. And so if I started to play uh, a music, uh, or a song on my playlist, chances are I don't need to interact with the device uh, anymore or this music application any, any longer. So chances are you know, I probably want to go and you know, maybe look at pictures or look at uh, a website. And so in order to do that, I need to you know, go back to the home screen and, and minimize this application. So in order to do that, we simply uh, interact with the bottom bezel. And so you place your finger on the bottom bezel like so and just literally swipe up from the bottom. And so this minimizes the application and reveals the home screen so that you guys can you know, select another application. So now I have my applications up here like in the app tray that are, are, are still alive and, and running in the background. And I can launch the photo application. And so I can go into the photo application and, and, and check out some photos. And like Mike showed earlier, you can easily swipe left to go back to your to music application. Maybe a song came on that you didn't like uh, and you wanted to switch the song while you're, while you're viewing the pictures. And then once you select a new song, you can swipe back to the photos and can continue browsing. So these are you know, three system level gestures that get recognized by the, by the platform and control uh, applications. The top bar is what we use uh, for, for in-app gestures. So you can actually use uh, the swipe down at the top, so placing your finger on the top of the bezel and, and swiping down, and your application can detect this swipe. And so 
you're able to, to show content uh, when, and reflect when that uh, top swipe occurs. So we use the top swipe for a couple different things. Uh, one, you can see here, we use it for the parent navigation. So I'm in the All Photos uh, album. And I can see at the top, I have up here, all of my albums that I can switch and easily toggle to. So I can go to Travel, and I can go to Family, and uh, you know, I, can, I can select in here, and it goes away, and I can launch up the top picture. Now that I'm in uh, a, a different album, you know, I may want to toggle in between pictures within that album. So what I can do is I can go to the top swipe again, and the top bar has now changed to you know, all, the, all the pictures within that album, so I can easily jump around and preview different, different images in that, in that album. One of the other things that we use the top swipe for is settings. So settings are, are really good for you know, to be hidden. It's, it's something that you would you know, select once and set once and then forget about it. Really trying to keep your, your user immersed in the, in the task at hand. You know, don't confuse them or, or distract them with a lot of UI elements on the screen that they don't need to interact with a, a whole lot. So I'm going to bring up the, the camera app again and show you an example of, of what those settings are. We'll just turn on the front camera so we can see. And you can see here in the camera, we actually use all of the, the top and, uh, for scene modes. So you can set scene modes and toggle in between them, it will be reflected in the camera and you can close it and continue to take pictures or video. So it, that's a, it's a really good example of something that we use for you know, hiding controls, you know, things that don't need to be on the screen at all times. So those are just some of the things that you can, you can take advantage of, um, you know, things to think about while you're developing your applications.